Auto crafting reinforced stone. So first I'm going to show you guys the basic setup and how to set it up. And then I'll go into more detail so that you can uh, get more information if you're interested or you can just stop watching if you're just trying to get this set up in your own world. This is Infinity Evolve Skyblock. Um, but I believe the only mods you should need to set this up would be Applied Energistics 2, Thermal Expansion, and Computer Craft. So, first thing, uh, you're going to need 10 turtles. I recommend the advanced turtles because they have a better user interface. But I think you can do this with a regular turtle if you want to. Um, you also need 10 Annihilation Planes. 10 formation planes, and 11 autonomous activators. So the basic idea is that we are going to place down our 10 scaffolds, and then the autonomous activator up here at the top sprays them, which turns them into foam. Then these 10 autonomous activators apply sand, which instantly turns it into the reinforced stone and then the annihilation planes destroy the block and put it into your system. So all of the logic is handled by this bottom turtle here and the other nine are slaves to this master turtle and all the logic is processed here and it passes redstone signal into a bundled cable that uh, has five different channels uh, the blue channel is for formation planes to turn on. The black channel is for the annihilation planes. The red channel is in case you get an unwanted block in your system that's not a scaffold, foam, or reinforced stone. Uh, white is for the autonomous activator uh, that's up on the top that has the sprayer in it. And then orange is uh, sa the sand autonomous activators. So if you get an unwanted block in here, um, this is so you can hook up like an alarm or something, like this howler alarm. Uh, so if I stick a block in here, it turns on the red line and then it activates that so you know that there's something that needs to be fixed. So basics. Um, first you need a solid block on the bottom because you can't place a scaffold on a non-opaque block. Um, even like a crafting table, you can't place it on top of it, it has to be a solid block. Um, and then you need your annihilation plane set up on this side. Uh, formation planes over here. And each of the formation planes, I went ahead and set the priority on. So the bottom one is the highest priority because the scaffold have to be placed from bottom to top. They need a block underneath them. So this one is set to 10, and then it goes 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then this ME interface that imports the items is set to 0. Um, and then on your uh, glass cables running out of the annihilation and formation planes, since we have 10, um, you can only have 8 channels on a regular line, and we have to use regular lines because we need toggle buses to be activated by these redstone uh, cables that come out of the turtle. So um, you'll have to run this, the smaller lines here with the toggle bus and then connect those into a dense cable uh, that can hold the, the higher number of channels since we can only do eight on each of these. And then same thing over here, toggle bus and toggle bus for each of the two sets. And then for the uh, turtles, I guess we'll go, we'll go ahead and look at the autonomous activators first. So each autonomous activator has a stack of sand and then just a bunch of garbage in here to fill up the other slots and we're using first slot only. And everything is set to redstone control high. And all of these are the same. And then the one up here with the sprayer, same thing. We just fill up garbage and then we have the sprayer here. Now part of the reason that we did 10 blocks is because the sprayer, you'll see this one here has 1100 millibuckets, which is an uneven number, and we want our sprayers to completely empty out 
so that we can automatically refill them uh, up to full. So um, each sprayed block uses 100 millibuckets. So this stack here has 10, so you see it went from 1,000 to 100. And then that the process, obviously, you apply the sand, it turns it into the reinforced stone, and then the annihilation planes will break the blocks. So each one of these CF powders gives 1,000 millibuckets to the sprayer, so it divides evenly with this number of blocks. Um, and then you're going to need a redstone, like a red alloy wire, running down the side of all the autonomous activators to carry the signal from the orange. And you, you can run the redstone any way you like. Um, I used these wireless transmitters and receivers from WRCBE to get my redstone to each of the devices, but you could run it however you like. And then you obviously need power on the autonomous activators. Um, each of these sand autonomous activators is going to need sand supplied to it constantly. So the way that I did that was with an ME interface connected to my main system that just has sand and a sprayer slapped in the config here. And this is a full sprayer. Um, and then I have um, Ender IO conduits uh, extracting with a filter sand on the green channel that goes into all of these. And then this one is extracting a full sprayer. Uh, I had some issues with the metadata in NBT uh, with trying to extract and input sprayers. Uh, so I ended up using a import bus to get the empty sprayers out of this autonomous activators. And then I was just using this conduit um, with a brown and filter set to the full sprayer to get it out of this uh, ME interface. But you could input this however you like. Um, an export bus should work if you'd like to set it up that way instead, but it'll use another channel. So this is just using one channel for both the sand and the depositing of the sprayer, and then one more channel to extract here since I couldn't get it to work with just... It, it was working, but I had to like toggle the... Um, this ignore metadata on and off, and it would make it work again. I, it was just kind of weird, so I just switched over to the uh, import bus is more reliable. And then this is also just set to redstone signal control. Um, so that's the basic setup. And then on all of your turtles here, um, you just have a stack of advanced turtles. Each one of them needs to have a wireless modem equipped on the right side for the, the program that I wrote. So um, in order to do that, and you're also going to have to label each of the turtles. So you see this one is named CF Turtle 10, all the way up to CF Turtle 1 up at the top. And those names are important because I used them in the code. So you do have to have CF Turtle 1 at the top. Uh, 1 through 9, I don't believe it matters what order those 9 go in, but I would you know, just put them in order. <laughs> uh, and then the uh, bottom one that's the master, uh, it has to be CF Turtle 10. So in order to do that, on your new turtle, uh, you want to open up the turtle and type Lua, and then put a wireless modem in the inventory slot here that's currently selected. You see the border around it shows that, that slot's selected. And then type turtle.equipwrite. And when you do that, you'll see it shows up on the side of the turtle like that. And then also uh, in the Lua prompt, you'll want to type OS set computer label and then the name of each of the turtles. So you have to do this for each one and increment this number up by one for each. So CF turtle one, two, three, four, up to 10. And then on CF turtle one through nine, which are the slave turtles. So basically this turtle is the brain. So it's the master. And then these all just do whatever this turtle tells them to. So um, on all of the slave turtles, you'll want to get this paste bin. So you just type uh, outside of the Lua prompt. So if you're in the Lua prompt, like on here, just type exit. And then that'll get you back to the root prompt. And then just type paste bin, get, and this paste bin code, brqa8qpm, and the case it is case sensitive. And then a space and startup, which will save this 
paste bin program as startup on this machine. And then you'll need to repeat that for CF Turtle 1 through CF Turtle 9. And then on CF Turtle 10, you want to get this other paste bin, which is the master program. And there's the code for that, TRT1IYEG. And again, case sensitive. And it'll save as startup. And the startup program will automatically run um, whenever you first start up the game. So you don't need, you shouldn't need to do anything to get the system running again after the programs are saved on those turtles. So once you've installed those programs on the turtles from Pastebin and you've installed the wireless modem on each turtle, including the, the master, um, all you need to do is open up each one of the slave turtles and type startup at the prompt and press enter and that will start running the program. And then once you've got all of the slaves running, open up the master and type startup on that one and that should get your program running. So some more specifics about how exactly everything is set up. Um, so the master, basically it asks each turtle, it goes down the line from one to nine and says, what is the block that's in front of you? And the, the, each one of those will send a message back and it'll process those messages. And it has some logic in the program to determine um, which block, are all the blocks the same? And if they are all the same and they're the right block, so are they all scaffolds? Um, if they are all scaffolds, it will tell the sprayer to spray. That's so that turns on that redstone signal. And then if all of the blocks are foam, it'll turn on the white line to tell this autonomous activator, or sorry, it'll, it'll turn on the orange line to make all of the sand autonomous activators activate. And uh, it waits for them all to be, it makes sure that every block has changed so that you don't end up with any weird states where some of the blocks have changed and others haven't. And then you have problems with the um, annihilation planes breaking scaffolds or foam or getting sand placed where the Atanos activators when there's nothing to place it on so you end up with sand blocks in your system and breaks it. Um, and then you have the conditions for uh, checking to see if there's something that's not supposed to be there to turn on the red line, which shouldn't ever happen. I've, I've done a couple thousand reinforced stone and it hasn't broken yet, so it seems to be pretty stable. But that's basically it. Um, as far as the wiring goes, so I have an ME controller here because this has to be a subnet here. Because these formation planes, um, you also want to whitelist the iron scaffolds so that they don't try to place anything else just in case you like accidentally <laughs> connect your main line. If say, so see I have this as a subnet here with this quartz fiber cable separating just for power. If I were to connect a cable between these two here, this formation plane would start trying to pre place every block that comes into my ME, main ME system. Uh, so it's nice to have the iron scaffold set in there as a filter so that even if you mess up, it'll only try to place iron scaffolds. Um, but if I were to connect those right now, it would try to, if I like placed an iron scaffold into my system, it would automatically place it without me requesting reinforced stone to be created, which is not what we want. We only want to create it whenever we request it from the system. So that's why this is set up as a subnet. Uh, so you have a panel ME interface attached to a full block ME interface. The panel is connected to the main system. The full block is on the subnet, so there's no cables connecting from the main system to this subnet. It's a completely independent ME system. So the quartz fiber cable here allows the power to come from the main line um, into the, the system without transferring any data. And then we have a dense cable here because there's eight channels here. So we can't have a smaller cable here. And then there's two channels down here and one for this ME interface. And those go into these dense cables and connect to this ME controller. And you should only need one controller block to handle this subnet. And then over here on the annihilation planes, these are connected to the main system, which you can see I just have 
this is just a temporary setup here in the middle of my base, but the, uh, this dense cable runs straight to the main system. And uh, again, you have to split these off because there's too many channels for a small cable. Um, and you, you notice they don't use any channels when they're deactivated. So whenever there's reinforced stone here, these will turn on and they'll use up the channels. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, this is just another, this ME interface is just connected to the main system to supply the sand and the sprayers. As far as the automating the sprayer, you just need a canning machine, fluid solid canning machine, uh, pump water in, so just a reservoir or whatever, just pump water into it. Um, you just put the sprayer and CF powder and that fills it up, adds a thousand millibuckets to it. So I have a ME interface here that's connected to my main ME system. It has a pattern that says uh, put in one empty sprayer and eight CF powder and that gives you one full sprayer. And that just inputs straight into here. Um, it combines no problem and the AE system is actually very good at recognizing the difference between the empty and full sprayers so it doesn't mess up on that. But that's basically it. Um, I'm going to be posting this on Reddit, so if you have any questions, you can try to post them in the thread there. I'll check on it and see if there's any uh, questions that people have about how to set it up. I'm sure the, the programming could be a little more elegant, but my experience, I'm not an experienced programmer, and this was my, actually the first thing I've done in computer craft, so hopefully you guys get it and find it useful.